I wanted to do a just a quick I call these like little spiritual snippets <laughs> like a little spiritual encouragement that's not a totally long um so anyways so this morning and the last couple of weeks have been reading through the book of Exodus. And one of the things that hit me and I thought was really, really incredible is that as God is telling Moses, you know, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And God says something very interesting. And it was, well, everything God says is interesting. But he says to to the people, you know, as you are leaving, that I'm going to basically cause the Egyptians to give you all their wealth, to give all their wealth up over to you, that you're going to ask them for gold and you're going to ask them for fine clothing and you're going to ask them for all these things. And I'm going to move upon their hearts to give it to you so that you'll basically take all of their wealth with you. As the, the, as the Israelites are leaving Egypt and, and God is doing all of these, these um, signs and wonders that we know are the plagues, and the signs and wonders of the first Passover and God protecting the people. Not only did he protect their lives, their livestock and their health, but he sent them to where they were going with something. They did not leave empty handed. And I find this incredible because it just reminded me that even though God was sending them to this, this deserted place in this, this literal wilderness, that they were going to, we know they were going to roam around in for 40 years. Um, that what ends up happening is they don't have to go looking around for things to build the, 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 the first, you know, this first tent of meeting, this first tabernacle to God. They didn't have to look for things that they were going to have to sacrifice to God. They were sent with everything that they were going to need to worship God. You know, the only thing, well, God provided everything that they were going to need to worship him, even though, you know, they were still in control of their hearts and where their hearts would lead them. This reminds me of, you know, Noah, you know, and, and thinking about the, the flood, God sent them with everything that they would need to worship him. And I thought now, you know, we are the, the the temple of the Holy Spirit if we're believers in Jesus Christ and we're followers of him. And what's interesting is the most important things to worship God were given to us. So we have blood pumping through our bodies. We have a mind. You know what I mean? In the most important things that we have, God has given us. So even if we are in the middle of nowhere, God has given us lips that we can speak. God has given us a mind that we can think. And God has created every single thing that we would need and gave us every single thing that we would need in order to worship him. He didn't leave these things up to us, but what he left up to us was our free will to do it or not. And that's what the people were faced with in this wilderness. And that's what we are faced with now, where we are in an area and a time where maybe it's hard to do a lot of just the everyday basic things. But the most important thing for you to do is is to worship God with your life and to point your heart toward him. And that's what he was looking for. He wanted these people to freely worship him. He took every distraction of Egypt and all the pagan idolatry and removed all of these things from their, from their lives and brought them to this place where they could sacrifice and freely worship God. But it was their choice. And we see how that went. I'm not going to go into the whole... Um, book of Exodus um, right now. I'm still in it myself of just, but as I'm reading this and I would encourage you to read Exodus and yes, there's a lot in it and there's so many layers of things in there, but what's most important in there is that we see what pe what God directly says to the people, giving them the 10 commandments, hearing about Moses who was faithful and yes, he got angry with the people. And I don't, I don't really blame him. Um, because God is saying over and over and over, I am your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And I used to think, why does God keep saying that? And it's because we are forgetful. Moses goes up on this mountain, goes to Mount Sinai, goes to the top of this mountain. And the people are like, oh, Moses is gone too long. We don't know what happened to the dude. I'm paraphrasing. 
We don't know what happened to him. So let's just, um, you know, let's, let's build something that we can worship, that we can see because so much unknown is going on right now. And I just want to encourage you, whatever your unknown time is right now, don't turn away from God in it because this is the very time that you can turn to him and that God wants you to turn to him. And whenever we're in times where we're like, ah, what's going to happen next? What's going to be, you know, what's happening later on down the road? You know, these people couldn't see Moses or where he was. So they took it upon themselves instead of, you know, I, I was even thinking this morning, like, how crazy is it? They made a golden calf. If they were really concerned about Moses and where he went or how long he was going to be, wherever he was going to be, why didn't they use that as an opportunity to, to melt down this gold and turn it into, I don't know, fashion it into a horn that they could call on Moses, like an emergency call. <laughs> like, please pray for us. We are like losing our minds down here and we are so scared. We need a leader. We don't know what's going on. Um, Why is it that we make the choices that we make? To lean out on our own understanding is what Proverbs says. Instead of whatever it is that you know about God today. I mean, because we don't know everything that there is to know about God, but we know what he has told us about himself. Why don't we rely on what we have from God right now and focus on that until God gives us something else? Another, um, you know, just... It gives us more clarity as we're walking with him, whatever that is, the thing that you know that God has spoken to your heart, the thing that you know that God has stirred within your heart, do that thing because that to me is is our way of saying, God, I don't know what's coming next, but I'm worshiping you in the middle of my unknowns. I'm worshiping you in the middle of my, you know, you know, confusion that, that I may be experiencing and I'm worshiping you in the middle of in the midst of the unknowns. And I just want to encourage you to do that. So this is not a long episode. Um, I think I have time to link everything, but read this for yourself. If you can, you know, pop over to Exodus, um, go ahead and, and, and read some of these things to remind you as, it, as scripture, I believe does for us over and over again, is that, you know, we have to read every day because we need to remind our own hearts and our own selves how good God is, how glorious God is. He's worthy of our worship in the midst of whatever situation we're in. So I just wanted to encourage you with that. I hope you have an amazing week. And I hope this little spiritual snippet was something just to um, challenge and encourage you, um, edify you, and, and point you right back to Jesus. Point you right back to reading your word. And point you back to taking whatever it is that God has given you that you know. And, and walking in obedience to whatever he has told you to do or placed on your heart to do. So until next time, your life matters. What you do with it matters. So what will you steward well?